Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we are returning to the Kane comic universe for Kane issue 5, written by Will Meldman and starring Brock O'Hearn. And just recently, they inked a deal with the studio, Rogue Matter, as a partner and distributor. So as of right now, you can go to roguematter.com forward slash Kane and get a free digital copy of Kane issue 1. And I have that link in the description for anyone who wants to head over there and snatch that up. But if by chance you're new to the Kane series, I have a playlist in the description that'll get you caught up with everything leading into Kane issue 5. So if you want a deeper understanding on the events that lead up to here, I got you. And with that said, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming back, we pick up with Kane, McKenna, Bert, and Anna just after they were overwhelmed by Global Corp's forces and confronted by Mr. Montclair, the CEO of Global Corp, who's also the Silver Streak Wolf from issue one that killed Soterra, who for many years, Soterra was like a mother to Kane with her looking after him since he was an infant. But now with Montclair and his men finding Kane and the others here, there's a question of how did Mr. Montclair know that they were here and how did he catch up to them so quickly? And as it turns out, he found out from McKenna. And right off the bat with hearing this, Kane, he feels betrayed. And rightfully so. Though in her case, she admits that she tried to tell him before, though at the time she wasn't sure how to put it into words. But nonetheless, Kane is finding out from the enemy. So the damage is done. And Mr. Montclair even goes on to tell them about their arrangement with her coming to him in search of Darwin's notebook, which as we know, this is only scratching the surface as far as her history with Global Corp. And for a moment here, Mr. Montclair asks Bert, who is this young man? Because he has his suspicions of Cain being the prophesied chosen one. But at the same time, he's kind of like, nah, I doubt it. So when Bert tells him, like, oh, he's just some mercenary I hired for the job. And Mr. Montclair buys it. But when one of his men brings over Kane's axe, which like we saw, it been blessed with a divine moonstone, in addition to it being a rare weapon before that. This again, stirs the curiosity of Mr. Montclair, but he doesn't say too much about it. He just gives Kane another look and he tells his men to throw everyone in the jeeps. And as they're heading to the next location, Kane's grandfather, Bert, lets him know that the different pantheons can recognize their own. But because Kane is unique, he's a descendant of Achilles with no weaknesses to silver, this makes him impossible to detect. And on top of that, the fact that he was a miracle child that was 3,000 years in the making, this just lends to the idea of someone like Mr. Montclair looking Kane right in the eye and still not knowing who he truly is. But along the way, their Jeep gets stuck in the mud and Mr. Montclair, he doesn't wait. So he just has the Jeeps in the back holding him, Anna and McKenna go around. But while Kane and Bert are here with these guys who are trying to get the Jeeps unstuck, a ton of fire arrows come in from over the tree line, followed by more members of the Riri tribe who've made their way here to come to the rescue. So Kane quickly uses this distraction as an opportunity to take out the driver. And soon after we find out, these additional Bribri tribe warriors were brought here by Anna's daughter, Naomi. And prior to this, they filled her in about Kane passing his trial at their temple. So she knows that he has the tribe's approval, but right now her main concern is saving her mother, which for the tribe is their top priority because Anna is their chieftain. So not long after they make their way to the airstrip. And right here, Bert makes sure to tell Kane that no matter what happens, he needs to get on that plane, get his ax back, and make his way back to the mountain before Montclair, because their ancestors pay with their lives to bury what's under that mountain, and Mr. Montclair will stop at nothing to possess it. And he goes on to tell Kane, like, son, don't sell my art. Almost like if anything happens down there, you know, just take care of my stuff. So Kane just tells him, you'll be there to help me, grandpa, to where soon after they head down with the Bree Bree tribe and they get down to business. But there's a moment here where Bert tells Kane to make his way to the plane while he draws out Montclair, who at this point is already on the plane. And as Bert wolves out, Kane tells him like, hey, you're not really in the best shape to take on this guy, let me help. Only for Bert to tell him, no son, your mission has been in motion for thousands of years. My life is not worth compromising your destiny. You need to save Anna and get out of here. But just before they split up, Kane puts his hand on his grandfather's shoulder and he gives him a hug before getting on the plane. But right as this is happening, Mr. Montclair, he sees them. And you can tell by the look in his eyes, he's thinking, what kind of man turns into a wolf and hugs a mercenary? So he tells his men he's gonna go out there and handle it. So he wolfs out and he confronts Bert. But in addition to this, we also find out here that there's a lot more going on because prior to this, Bert killed Montclair's father. And even though Montclair's had the opportunity prior to this 
to attack Bert and act on his desire for revenge, it seems as if the only reason he didn't go after him before was because he planned on doing this after uncovering his ancestor's secrets. But after Bert got away, only to come back for this attack, Montclair is just like, we're gonna settle this now. Meanwhile, inside the plane, Kane is joined by Naomi, Anna's daughter who tells him to show her that he's the man her tribe believes that he is. And it's not so much the case of Kane having to prove himself. The tribe already told Naomi Kane passed his trials, so she knows he's capable. But it's more of the case where she's reiterating what she said before, when she told Kane that her tribe will stop at nothing to ensure the survival of their chieftain. So Kane doesn't hold back. But first they end up coming across McKenna, who's tied up in a room alongside of Kane's axe. And right away, she starts to apologize for this whole situation. But Kane's not trying to hear that right now, so he tells her to focus on getting Anna out of here. So McKenna lets them know that Anna's towards the rear of the plane by the cargo ramp, so they all head back there to free Anna. And Kane tells Naomi to take Anna and make their way out safely through the path they created to get here. And as they do, just outside, we can see the visceral fight between Bert and Montclair which at this point is looking all kinds of chaotic, with the fire that was started from the Breebee tribe's attack spreading everywhere, surrounding the plane as well as the fight between these two. And coming back to this fight, we find that things are looking pretty rough for Bert. This guy's getting hammered, and it's not long before all the action outside grabs the attention of both Kane and McKenna, cause there's a lot going on, it's really hard to miss. But with their attention being just now drawn to this fight, they look outside just in time to see Mr. Montclair kill Bert. And man, it's brutal. Though the art is gorgeous, by the way. I do gotta put that out there. But it's kinda also messed up, cause right after this, Montclair just throws Bert's body to the side like he's nothing. With Kane watching this in total devastation. And just after this, Montclair heads over to Kane. Then he asks, are you the one, the loner in the woods that killed my brother? Which right there is referring back to the wolf Kane killed in issue one. So Kane tells him his name which from here peels back a layer of secrecy. Now that Montclair knows that Kane is a bit more of a threat than your common mercenary, which he already had a suspicion of prior to this. But now that Montclair knows without a doubt that Kane killed his brother, in addition to him realizing that Bert was trying to hide and protect this guy, this now has Montclair like, hey, Kane gotta go. But Kane holds his own in his fight and he gets the upper hand. But when one of Montclair's men step in and opens fire on Kane, this distracts him for a brief moment, allowing Montclair to get back up and turn the tables. And though McKenna's able to one-shot this guy and get him out the way, Kane on the other hand, he just gets wrecked. And all just cause he let his guard down for a couple seconds. So Montclair just throws Kane out the back of the plane, taking his axe and McKenna while leaving Kane here to die. But while he's laying here and bleeding out, he sees a light come down from the sky. Where out from it, descending from above, he's approached by none other than the woman who raised him. Sotera, which at first comes off as like a miracle of sorts, but it's here where it's revealed to us that Sotera is Zeus's daughter, the goddess of safety and deliverance. And as she appears, it's kind of laid out here like the creation of Adam Pating, which is pretty cool, but because her time is limited here, she needs to act quickly to bring Kane a message that she can only deliver by showing him more so than telling him. And to do this, Kane needs to die first. So she drives her spear right into his chest, only to call him forth out of his body and take him on a journey throughout millennia past so that Kane can understand the gravity of what he needs to do by learning about his ancestors who came before him. And at the same time, with this starting in Ithaca, Greece, 3000 years ago, it also shows us how even back then, there were moments where Sotera was looking out for Kane's ancestors, with this being their kingdom. And even at a time when Hades sent his servant to attack, Sotera made sure to protect Kane's bloodline to ensure the hope of what would come thousands of years later. And even in cases like this, this kid would grow up to live a tortured life and later become a gladiator who would send thousands to the underworld. Some who served evil and others who were just gladiators like him. But amongst showing Kane his ancestors, one of the most important things that Sotera points out is that much like them, Kane has to make the choice to do good himself. Cause next she shows him an example of another ancestor who came after and this guy nearly jeopardized the whole lineage because at one point he was twisted by an evil master but it just goes to show that nothing is guaranteed and the decisions that Cain makes they matter in traveling through these different times we also learn that there's a second axe out there somewhere and many of the ancestors that Cain has shown line up with the story that he was told by Bert and eventually this leads them into the modern time where Cain sees his birth mother handing him over to Sotera which now this fills him in on all the history that we knew and it takes it a step further by revealing to Kane who Sotera's truly been this whole time. But the history lessons cut short when we see there was someone searching for Sotera who's now caught up with them here. 
so quickly she returns Kane back to his body while telling Kane that he must stop Montclair from reaching the mine and to remember what she's shown him because everything depends on it. And as soon as Kane is placed back in his body, we see this dark figure take Sotera away. And though we're not told who this is, it's only implied at the moment that this person is the reason why. Sotera's time here has been limited, as well as her not appearing to Kane earlier. But more of those details lend for another story for another time. Cause now that Kane's back, he's met by Naomi who's come to see if he's okay, but Kane's gotta hurry and get back home so he can stop Montclair from reaching the mines. And when he gets back, he's met by both Timothy and Dr. Hellman, who Kane breaks the bad news to about Bert. And for a moment here, Dr. Hellman offers to look at Kane, but he turns it down because Kane, he got places to be. And next, Timothy pulls Kane to the side to let him know that his grandfather left him 100% of his estate, which he had set in place before they left. But again, Kane doesn't have the time for this right now. So he tells Timothy that they'll take care of the paperwork later. And he asks him what's the status back over in Eagle Top. So Timothy tells him that it's gotten bad. Global Corp is in stated martial law, which pretty much means going forward, Kane's gonna run into quite some resistance. So next, Timothy takes Kane back over to the armory because all these rare weapons that his grandfather left behind, they now belong to him. And some of them Kane even recognizes from his brief time travel history lesson with Sotera. So yeah, throughout this armory, there's an assortment of weapons that go back thousands of years. So hopefully this will give Kane what he needs to take the fight to Montclair and Global Corp. But that'll do it for this one guys. I have a link in the description that'll take you over to roguematter.com forward slash Kane so you can purchase your copy of Kane issue 5 today. But don't forget, as of right now, you can also get a digital download of Kane issue 1 for free. So make sure to snatch that up too because I don't know how long that's going to be going for. But yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments, and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.